So this list of transformations is not supposed to be comprehensive, but I just picked the ones that I thought were the most important. Um, so for the first one here, if we had a negative sign in front of the x, one property of exponents is that you can just do basically one over or the reciprocal, and that will get rid of the negative sign. So two to the negative x is the same as one over two to the x. And then my dog stretching. <laughs> and so you can factor out the x on the bottom here and you can have one half to the power of x because one to the power of anything is just gonna be one. So we're able to kind of factor out that x. So what does all of that mean? Well, basically if you have a negative exponent it's really just a fraction raised to a variable. And so instead of having exponential growth, we end up with exponential decay, um, which is a term I think that you use pretty often in the class. So this is decay. All right, and the way that I set this up was, um, I kept the exact same qualities, but I boxed in the ones that change when we do that transformation. So going through this really quickly, um, the intercept is gonna be the same, um, again, because you plug in zero, anything to the power of zero is gonna be one. So intercept is the same. Domain is the same, we can plug in anything. Um, and then range is gonna be the same as well, which, might be a little less intuitive, but it's easier to see if you just graph it. Um, and so you can see on the green curve over here that even though it's flipped, um, the range is still from you know zero to infinity. Positive and negative, it's still above the x-axis, so that's gonna be a positive. And increasing and, and decreasing does change. So for our original graph, which is in red right here, um, that was always increasing. The slope was always positive. But now that we've flipped it over the, um, the y-axis, um, now our slopes are, we need a different color. It's too yellow. All of our slopes are negative, if I draw my little line. So, yeah, um, a fraction raised to an exponent, that's gonna be decreasing. Concavity stays the same. We still have that cup shape. Um, end behavior, that's gonna change slightly. Um, it's mainly just flipped. So as X approaches infinity, I have the watermark in the way. <laughs> um, don't pay attention to that. Next example, ignored, okay. Um, y is going to approach zero. So that's a little bit different. And as x approaches negative infinity, y is going to approach positive infinity. And you can just see that kind of on the graph itself. Okay, and asymptotes, that's going to stay the same. Um, y equals zero. Yeah, I'll write it in again. Okie doke. And so that is the transformation for a negative exponent. Again, it just makes it into a fraction, which is exponential decay. And this is our final example here for exponential functions. Yay. All right, so let's say that negative was on, um, was at the front of the function. And we can see in the graph over here that that's basically just going to flip it over the x-axis. So a common theme with functions that you'll probably want to remember is if the variable is negative, then it flips over the y-axis. But um, if the variable, not the variable, if the negative sign is in the front, then it flips over the x-axis. And I have that written out later, actually. Anyways, so what's going to change here are the intercepts, definitely, because we're going to multiply that 1 right here by negative 1 to get negative 1. 
And so our intercept is going to flip down there. Um, domain is the same. We can plug in anything. Um, range is going to change because now we've flipped it over on the other side, and that changes our y values a lot. And we can see that um, we're still approaching zero, but now all of our y values are negative. So our range is going to be from negative infinity to zero. Wow. Also, feel free to pause this at any point if you want and try them yourselves before I give the answer. I personally work that way, so maybe you want to do that too. Moving on though. So number four, um, positive and negative obviously going to change. It's going to be negative the entire time now. Increasing and decreasing. Um, so our original graph is increasing. But let's take a look at this. If we draw, I can barely see that. It's too red. If we draw our tangent lines, or just lines if you want to call them that, um, on the new graph, we see that our slopes are always, always negative. So this graph is going to be decreasing. And then that also affects the concavity. We see that it's concave down like a frown. So we would say concave down. Um, and behavior, yep, that's going to change. So if we look in our graph, as x approaches infinity, y is going to approach negative infinity. And then as x approaches negative infinity, um, we can see that the curve is approaching that zero line. So y is going to approach zero. Cool. Um, asymptotes don't change. Again, it's just going to be that y equals zero. All right, and then one more thing, because our asymptotes have not been affected yet and we want them to be. If we had like a plus five um, after this, you know, what would happen? And so that's definitely going to change our intercepts. That will change our asymptotes. And it would change our range, actually. So let's take a look at what this, um, what this would do. So the intercept, everything would shift up. So we would have to add 5. And we would end up getting 0, 4 for the intercept. Then that asymptote is going to shift up 5. So our asymptote is going to be right here now. And our graph is going to approach that. It'll look something like that, probably a little neater. Um, and then we would also have an x-intercept at that point. Um, yeah, so our new asymptote would be at um, y equals 5. And then so for our range, instead of going from negative infinity to 0, we would go from negative infinity to 5. And it would be the same sort of thing if we had subtracted 5. Um, OK, so that are the major, those are the major um, transformations. And in the next part, we're going to do some log stuff. So thanks for watching.